Hello, it's time for an update on my X99 Hackintosh system. So now I have a bunch of extra stuff for it, like its own power supply and its own case. We can finally get it out of this test bench into a case and we can get the OS installed. I had some trouble getting Mac OS DB installed and I will explain that as I install it into the case and as we continue with the installation process. So first let's get the case and let's get this in there. Okay, so here we have our case. This is the Cuboy G by DIY PC. I really like small cube cases, though I think this case is a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. Let's take it out of the box. Let's see what we got. Here's our case. The one thing about cases that I um, was picky about was a CD-ROM drive. So in this machine I'm going to be installing a Blu-ray drive, so I really needed this slot here. This case has on the top USB 3, USB 2, and even windows on the side. Let's just peel this guy off. Maybe. I cannot. There we go. Is it supposedly glass, not plastic, but I'm not sure. Some nice thumb screws there. And peel off the inside. Inside we have one big fan at the front here, another fan over here, hard drive bays, this should swing out, oh, the screw there, unscrew this and this swings out for SSDs. Guessing in here is all our screws and accessories and stuff. This is a decent little case, I like it, I like it a lot. Here's all our front panel connectors tied up top here. This top part comes off pretty easily, so you can put an IO radiator here if you wanted to. So yeah, let's get our motherboard and screw it into this case. I decided before putting the motherboard in, we'll first put in our power supply. This is a Roseville Glacier 600 watt. It actually purchased as open box from Newegg, so I don't know if it meant someone returned it or what was wrong with it, but Luckily it seems to come with all the pieces that we need. This is a semi-modular power supply, which is fine because obviously we're going to need the 24-pin and 8-pin connectors. Anyway, and then you can just get one SATA cable here because we have a hard drive and a CD-ROM drive and we don't need any of the other cables. But I'll do the other cables later, obviously. So now let's get the power supply installed in our system. Luckily it comes with the screws that you need to install it. Let's turn our case around. And slot in our power supply. Make sure the fan points downward. We can suck up the nice clean air from the bottom with the vent there. Very nicely put this in. I think there's some little pads underneath where the power supply goes to keep it from vibrating. That's nice. Now we just gotta line up our screws. Alright, with our power supply installed, let's not forget to install our IO shield. Best to do this now so we don't forget to do it later. As always, you just snap it on in from the inside, looking good. And now, get our motherboard and screw it down. Luckily, this case came with the correct standoffs already. 
installed for micro ATX. So what we have to do is screw it down. So we line up our board with the standoffs and with the I.O. shield. So another challenge with cases was this cooler. There was a few other cases that I was looking at that I originally wanted to get for this build, but they wouldn't fit because of the cooler being too big. And interestingly, this I.O. shield has the Ethernet port covered, so you need to just bend this up and then just have it touch the top of the port inside. Bend that down on top of the port. That, and we're good. Now let's find our correct motherboard screws and screw this sucker down. Alright, put the motherboard screwed in. Let's slot in our graphics card. It has, over the PCI slots, this little locking bracket here, which does have a thumb screw, but it was a little too tight for me to get it. So, just unscrew it, slide it up, and uh, out, get yeah, out. Remove our PCI bracket here. It's also very tightly installed, even though it is a thumb screw. Then put in our nice small single slot, no external power needed graphics card. So one thing about this graphics card is that OS X does not like XFX cards for some reason. There's something to do with the BIOS in these cards and the installer will not load. With whatever, with whatever green and whatever else I do, it won't install. So what I had to do was I had to reflash this card, which is an RX 460, with an ASUS BIOS, which I found, and it seems to work. I had to use, I had to install this into another computer running Windows with a different graphics card in it, and make sure to flash this one and not the other one. And I haven't ran the installer yet, but I did just boot up. Linux on a flash drive on this card and it works so hopefully the ASUS BIOS will let the OS X installer actually boot since it would not with the XFX one, XFX BIOS on this card. It's a really weird issue but I'm not the only one with that issue so it's just weird. It's, anyway, let's get our card installed. It's very cleanly in there and let's get it back together. Alright, now let's install some drives. For storage, like I said, I have this one terabyte Western Digital Blue. And I want to install this Blu-ray drive, which, while well, it doesn't say Ultra HD 4K on it, I actually modified the firmware on this drive to be able to read 4K UHD discs. And I tested it, and it works great. So, I'll also put it in here. First, let's get our hard drive. Put that in the top hard drive cage. Hmm. The cages already have some screws in them, so let's just... Do we need to loosen these, or...? Oh! Huh. So you don't unscrew the screws, you just... slide it. That! Let's take the hard drive in. And clamp it shut, I guess. That is... weird. But, it does feel secure in there. Seems like it's going to work. Just check that it's actually in there. Yeah, it feels okay. Hmm, looks like there is a place on the bottom to install a screw, so I'm going to do that. Even though I think this is fine, but just to be safe. And one more. And slide our hard drive back in. Now let's punch out the panel here for the optical drive. Move from the inside, have to... Oh, 
the little metal bracket here on the inside of the case. You need to bend so I can pop the front panel out and then bend out the little metal cage that is renting the drive from going in. Yep, see that? I had to just bend that back and forth to get it out. And then this, now I can slide my Blu-ray drive in there. Eh, yeah, that looks pretty good. The black on the black there, it's definitely flush. And then just screw that sucker in. So while I was wiring this up, I found one annoying thing. So I have the hard drive power plugged in, and the CD-ROM drive is here, and this cable is just too short. Like, it's maybe a millimeter or two millimeters too short. So I'm going to need to install another SATA cable, because this will not reach there, while also being plugged in to the hard drive. That's annoying. Okay, I got all the cables plugged in. Field management isn't too bad here, just that the the fan cables for the built-in case fans are not very long. Also have these annoying like built-in Molex connectors. You connect them by a Molex or 3-pin fan. So this, this little Molex plug is sort of dangling there, but it's fine. So we have our HD audio, USB 3, USB card reader built into the top, and our USB 2 ports. And then on the other side, we have our ATX and 8 pin power connectors. Oh, so this isn't it all the way. Let me fix that. Oh no. There we go. Not have our 8 pin connector in quite all the way. That would have been bad. It's in there now. 24 pin looks fine. And here's our other case fan over here. The same sort of Molex plug sort of dangling somewhere. And yeah, cable management, I don't know, because I'll, I'll just sort of stuff these power cables in here. I'll have to get SATA cables, obviously, but looking at this, I think we're just about ready to rock. I'm going to get some SATA cables, and we'll plug this thing in and see what happens. Well, hooray for crappy cable management, but at least everything is in there and plugged in. So, I guess we can put our side panels back on and boot her up and see what happens. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't put the side panel on for the first boot up, but I'm confident that everything is good here. Plus, the windows on it, you know, help if something isn't right, like the fans aren't spinning or whatever, I could at least see that. So. It doesn't really matter if I don't put the if I put the side panels on or not. Let's spin this around. It's still not super heavy. The case is pretty light, and obviously with the computer power supply and whatnot in it, it's a bit heavier, but it's not bad. I'm really happy with this thing. This is a nice, nice case. Let's get this some screw back in. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay, one more thing before I boot this up. Need to put some case badges on it. Though, interestingly, with the mesh on the front, there's no real good place to put the case badges. I think I'm going to put them on, on the side. Like along this side, I think, will be alright. Maybe? Or... I want them like... Can I stick to the... Yeah, right. Can I stick them to the mesh on the front there? That should be fine. We have... A metallic... Intel Xeon inside sticker. For our... Processor, obviously. Oh yeah. That'll work. Maybe? Oh no, not sticking? I'm gonna stick. Hmm. It's not sticking. Let's see if it'll stick to the side there. Oh, 
Okay, sticks there much better. Guess I'll keep it there then. So I have an AMD one for our graphics card. Yeah. Could have peeled the little front plastic off of these stickers after you stick them, but they are not sticking. Which is weird because I bought these same type of stickers from the same seller before and they've been fine. Maybe just material on this case does not like stickers or maybe these stickers sat for too long before using them. I don't know. I don't know. Seems to be okay now, after I got the plastic peeled off the front. Yeah, okay, that should be fine. Also going to install a special NGI Compass case badge as well. On top of those. There. And on either side of the case, Apple stickers. Since this is going to be a Hackintosh after all. Not on the glass. Just wanted to clean some dirt off the glass. Put next to the glass. I'm gonna put this apple sticker about there, and maybe one on the other side. No, I want to put it here. I want to put it here. I'm put it in the back. There we go. Now it's looking beautiful. Alright, I got everything plugged in, we're going to switch on the power supply, and see what happens. Everything's looking good. All our fans are spinning. And we get a picture. Let's see if it boots into our Mac installer. Right. I need to switch the KVM so that way I am controlling the this computer, not the capture machine, but luckily it just automatically boot into the installer. So let's see what happens. So far so good. Part of it being cut off, though I think that's just due to the capture card. Doesn't like quite like the resolution here, but so far it's working. Yeah, this does take a while. You can see a lot of weird like warnings and crap here, but it should eventually boot. I did test this installer with on this motherboard with a different computer card with an NVIDIA GT710 and did boot into the installer so that, that's how I knew that the XFX video card was the problem because it booted with another video card so hopefully this BIOS reflash I did on the card will fix it should be any time now so look at that we're in our installer not sure why the color looks strange here. It shouldn't be that color, but this is probably just the capture card and not the video card BIOS or anything, because I don't know, I've never seen this before, but it did boot, though it looks weird. It's glitching out a bit. Maybe it doesn't like the BIOS they put on the video card. Gonna have to test stuff. I mean, I did boot into Linux with this video card and had no problems, so maybe Mac doesn't like it, or maybe Capture Card doesn't like it. Let me switch over to a direct capture and see what it looks like. You can't see this, but I can. Oh, on a direct capture, it's still this weird color. That could be because I'm using a DVI to VGA adapter. Or a number of weird, weird things. You 
hopefully I can get the installer to run and I can get this installed. I will be back in a next video with what I managed to accomplish with this. So, anyway, thank you. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so it's glitching out, but I think it is actually in the installer and got past the, the loading phase. So, I think once I get Mac fully installed, I can fix the drivers or whatever and get it to actually properly run. So, for now, that's it.